Xfinity is tired of it. Tired of seeing TV cord cutters wander over to play on their Roku or Apple or Amazon devices. So this is their attempt to keep some of that money from strolling out the door. So how did they do? Well, here's the quick TLDR. I only got to test drive the Flex about halfway, and that is a vital part of the story of what it means to use the Flex, but we'll get there. But we can still talk about what Xfinity Flex is, how you get it, how it works, and whether we like it. So let's dive in. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like what we do here. Thanks for joining us today. So, First off, what in the heck is the Xfinity Flex? Well, it's this, this is it, this, this is the Flex, this whole thing right here. So how do you get it? Well, this is free to Xfinity internet only customers, like me, hey, that's me. Indeed, all I had to do was go online and claim mine and it arrived on my doorstep a few days later. But what if you're somebody else? Well, too bad, this is an exclusive device. But since Xfinity provides internet service to about 110 million people across 40 states, Flex, yeah, it is pretty widely available to a lot of people. So we figured a video on it would be worthwhile. Now, Flex is not going to bring anybody over to Xfinity. Because it's an exclusive device, it's just not going to do that. What it is designed to do is make current subscribers a little bit stickier, meaning that you'll have a harder time jumping ship if you have yet another Xfinity device in your rotation. Included is the streaming box itself, the remote, a power cable, and an HDMI cable. So it is ready to go right out of the box. Now, the device itself is fine. It's got all the ports you would expect, and it does include an ethernet connection, which I always recommend if you're able to take advantage of it when you're doing streaming. The remote is okay, it's all right. It's a lot more like a cable remote than a streaming remote. It's got tons of buttons, including a number pad, a number pad? Why does it have a number pad? Well, yeah, that's so that if you decide to go back to your linear TV, if you want to get back on that X1 platform, you quit Flex, the Flex device and the remote will work on the X1 platform as well. Now, once I got it out of the box and I was setting it up, oh boy, did I get frustrated right out of the gate. I could not get my remote to work. I spent about 10 or 15 minutes doing everything I could possibly think of. I'm doing factory resets on the remote. I'm doing everything I can think of to get it to work, to get it to pair with the streaming box, and it wouldn't do it. I was getting so frustrated. And I figured out what was going on right before the customer service agent answered the phone, and it was because the box was directional. And I can't figure out why this is the case. I don't see an infrared receiver anywhere on the box. Why would it be the case? But sure enough, all I had to do was rotate it 90 degrees so that the remote was pointing right at the front of the box and it worked like a charm. <sighs> well, then I got through setup. And once I got through setup, it worked through radio frequency just fine. So I could point it anywhere and it worked fine. I still don't know why that was the case during setup, but it was incredibly frustrating. Hopefully that helps somebody out there who's having a rough time with it. Now, as I moved through the setup process, it said that uh, the Flex will connect automatically to your Xfinity Wi-Fi, which is great, very convenient, except that while I have an Xfinity router, I actually route my network through a secondary Google Wi-Fi router, so I had to do it manually. No big deal, except that the buttons on this remote, not very pleasant to enter an email address and password with. I'd love to see an improvement on that. All right, now that we are into the interface, everything is all set up. I have connected my Netflix account. I've logged into my uh, Amazon Prime Video account. Let's talk about how to navigate the interface and what we see here. The first tab on your front page says free to me. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna show you content that you can watch for free. Now at first I saw 35,000 movies available. Whoa, is Xfinity giving me all that? And then I realized, of course, it's pulling content from Netflix and Amazon Prime. Like I said, I'd logged into those. So that's a lot of the movies that we're talking about right there. It's not just <laughs> Xfinity's generosity here. Now, I will say that it is nice to have everything right there in one place. Well, okay, not everything, but we'll get to that in just a bit. The next tab is Live TV. The Live TV tab pulls channels and content from preloaded free apps like Pluto TV and Zumo. These are commercial supported free TV apps. I've talked about them on other videos like this one up here. So if you wanna learn more about those, you can check that out elsewhere. The new tab has 
just that, new titles. It pulls them from Netflix, Prime Video, and YouTube. But all of that is buried under the new titles that you can rent or buy from Xfinity. And that's very similar to what you would see, uh, say, on an Amazon Prime stick or something. They're always going to push you to spend more money on their own platform. I don't really hold that against Xfinity, to be honest. The music app is, uh, well, you know, music. Now, like video, this will pull from services you link up. So YouTube, Amazon Music, etc. Now, I found myself drifting toward video content here as well. I mean, I'm on my TV, right? But I could watch music videos from YouTube, which was pretty cool. And it does show up there on the music tab. The today tab, this is the last one. And it does give you what you might expect based on that little icon, weather and news. So you get politics, celebrity gossip, late night roundups, and so on. But this is also where you can go if you are deeply embedded in the Xfinity ecosystem. So if you use Xfinity Home for smart home and home security stuff, this is where you can monitor camera feeds, control thermostats and lighting and so on, and all from your TV. You can also on this tab manage your XFi gateway, that's your internet router. It'll let you pause certain devices, access, like if a kid has been watching too much TV that day or on their phone too much, whatever the case may be. But I say you have to be deeply embedded in the Xfinity ecosystem because if you use a third party router, like me, like I said, I use the Google Wi-Fi mesh system, then devices hooked up through that router won't show up here. They have to be connected to that Xfinity gateway. Now, as for the content that you get to watch here on the Flex, let's talk about the apps that you get. There is some good stuff, Netflix and Prime Video, like I talked about, Acorn TV, that's a British TV streaming service, StreamPix, Tubi, HBO, Showtime, and Stars. Now, with the exception of Netflix and Prime Video, what they want is for all of your subscriptions to run through Xfinity. So any of those apps like Acorn TV or HBO, instead of paying those directly to the content provider, you can actually sign up for that so that it will come out of your Xfinity bill, or rather be added onto your Xfinity bill. But sharp viewers will notice that I left a few names off the list here. There is no Hulu, there's no Disney+, Plus, no CBS All Access, no Spotify for music, and so on and on and on. There are a lot of apps missing. In fact, it's probably faster to list the apps that they do let you use. It's worth noting, by the way, that last year Comcast agreed to sell its stake in Hulu to Disney. So maybe that has something to do with that app missing from the Flex? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Now, I can think of a few reasons why there would be a dearth of apps, but for our purposes today, the why might not be that important. What it means in practice, though, is that I'll never get to make one of those best free apps videos for Flex, like we've done for Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, Chromecast, and Android TV. I mean, that's one of the joys of streaming, right? Finding stuff that you never would have known about, let alone watched, if you didn't have it for free right there on your Roku or whatever. Like, if all I had was Flex, I'd never have discovered the Japanese dramedy Pretty Proofreader on Viki. Now, you can laugh all you want. It's fantastic. Senpai? As for what is there, as you use things like Netflix, Prime Video, and YouTube, Xfinity does its best to keep you on their interface instead of sending you somewhere else. So there's no obvious Netflix button to take you to the app there on the front page. Now you can find it, but you gotta dig. It's all the way at the bottom. Instead, they give you a button called Explore Netflix, and that shows you Netflix titles, but keeps you on the Flex interface. I rolled my eyes at first, but then saw that there might be some useful stuff, like the option to see what to watch on Netflix in February. Great, let's see what's coming up. Oh, well, it turns out it's a YouTube video. Well, okay, well, now I'm in the YouTube app. Okay, well, let me just hit the back button to get back to where I was. Oh, nope, can't do that. Gotta go back to the home page and then navigate back to explore Netflix. <sighs> okay, well, technically I could just use the exit button, but it took me a while to figure that out. It's not really intuitive. There is a learning curve with the interface. Okay, so let's talk about the bottom line here with Flex. First, let's look at Flex as a cord cutting device. If I was brand new to cord cutting, and I mean brand new, like I'd never signed up for Hulu, I'd never even heard of Roku, and I'm getting my first ever streaming device, then the Xfinity Flex would be okay. Okay? Yeah, it would be okay. I mean, it certainly works. It plays high quality video content, and it does have a good functional remote control, but with an extremely limited app selection as a cord cutter's device, I'd put this one pretty much way down at the bottom of the list. 
Now, was there a lot that made me really dislike the Flex? No, not a ton. It was pretty easy to use, honestly. But it was more about what wasn't there. Because of that lack of available apps, this is not a replacement for your Roku or Fire Stick or Apple TV. But the Flex is not just a cord cutting device. The saving grace for the Flex might be, like I mentioned earlier, if you are really all in on Xfinity's ecosystem. The Flex gives you pretty good control over your Xfinity router from your TV, or like I said, if you use smart home and home security features with Xfinity Home, those can be integrated so you have on-screen video feeds from your security cameras, controls for your thermostat, your lighting, and so on. So if that's you, if you are neck deep in Xfinity services, maybe Flex is worth a look. The only problem here is that's not me. I'm not all in on the Xfinity ecosystem, so I feel like I only got to test half of what the Flex is capable of. And the half that I got to test, yeah, didn't really impress me very much, but I'm interested to see what happens with the Flex going forward, if there are any changes or updates or apps added on, and I am going to continue my testing once I get access to the rest of the Xfinity suite of services so that I can tell you what I think of that part of it, because the promise of it, it is pretty cool. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you've had a chance to use the Flex to its full extent, go ahead and sound off with your take on the device. And if you want to support the reviews we do here on this channel, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to keep up with our reviews of streaming, phones, smart home devices, and much, much more. Thanks for watching, everybody.